Most people think of Warhol as a pop artist, lighthearted, about consumer goods, a Coca-Cola, some Campbell's soup, a Brillo box. That was a tiny, tiny brief chapter in Warhol's career because immediately the next year, the idea of death, of mortality, enters his work. Warhol came from a very poor working class family. There were immigrants from far east part of Slovakia. They were Byzantine Catholics and the icon, you know, the image of the Virgin on the gold ground was something that Warhol grew up with. In 1962, he decided to do a picture of Marilyn Monroe. And I think he treated her as an icon. He did many images of Marilyn, sometimes in color, sometimes in black and white or silver, but it was always the same image. So that Marilyn was a timeless goddess. She was immortal. Unlike Marilyn Monroe, Elizabeth Taylor was someone of our world, earthly, that she was mortal. And so he starts with her as a young woman, and in this painting, you see at the very top a very photographic almost kind of image, and then it flickers across this large canvas, sometimes fading, sometimes being saturated. And by the time you get to the bottom of the canvas at the far edge, she's almost completely disappeared and faded away. And I think this is a kind of metaphor for mortality, that in the bloom of youth, we also see the beginnings of a life and death. Warhol was not just a simple reflection of the culture. He was critically responding to the culture and to the existential issues of human life, which are always with us. We can never avoid the issues of life and death. And I think that's why War, part of the reason that Warhol is such a profound artist and why he remains so relevant today. So here we're looking at a portrait of a woman named Ethel Skull. Andy took her to Times Square and told her, be happy, be sad, be pensive, be flamboyant, and then assembled a group of these portraits by silk screening them on canvas with different colored grounds and made a multiple portrait of Ethel Skull. So Ethel would be just as famous as Marilyn or Liz. And I think this is the birth of our culture that we're immersed in right now. The obsession with the selfie, with the Instagram, with creating an identity out of the image of oneself. Well, we're standing in front of a series that Warhol did in 1964 called The Most Wanted Men. And these come from a New York police bulletin of criminals that the police felt were the most important to, to try to catch, you know, to, to put in jail, that they were the most dangerous ones. So I think by making the most wanted men from the police bullet and the subject was a sort of counterpoint or a, a kind of metaphor for his own identity as a gay man, that he was a criminal, that he was an outsider. So the idea of, of, again, identity is a very profound, fundamental issue in Warhol's work. And again, he was far ahead of our time that we're only catching up to now, that the issue about sexual identity is unstable, it could be fluid, and that what was once illegal, what was uh, outside the law, has now been actually embraced by society. That that's one of the revolutions of our time.